Hello, everybody, and welcome to this demonstration of the Zebra IOTA Edge SDK. I'm going to develop the demonstration using a Zebra TC21 device enabled with Zebra Data Witch technology. First of all, the Zebra IOTA Edge SDK includes a set of reference applications that can be used to exercise all the functionality offered by this SDK. First of all, is the holder application that I installed in my, in my device. And you can see that now it is open. In this holder application is a wallet for, of credentials so the user can manage and present, present his credentials. So to start using the application, you need to set a name for your wallet and then automatically a new identity, decentralized identity is going to be created for our user and recorded anchored to the IOTA distributed ledger. Once an identity is created, we can start adding new credentials to our wallet. However, here we are going to add ourselves, our own credentials, but in a real case, those credentials will be imported from those issued by a real issuer. We add a new credential. This credential will be self-signed. It means that the issuer and the subject are just the same. You can find here the information about the credential and the important part is the subject. The subject contains the decentralized identifier of our user and the one that we created in the initial step of this application. You can find here other personal information. Then the, these credentials can be presented to a proper verifier. This is done through the shared credential. The way of presenting a credential is through a data matrix code. The data matrix code just encodes the JSON-LD representation of a verifiable presentation. You can see here what is the JSON-LD code that is actually behind the data matrix code. As now, uh, we will need to verify, to present the credential and then verify. As I only have one device, what I'm going to do is to capture the data matrix code and then scan it, the, the data matrix code using the verifier application. I'm going to capture. And when it is captured, it will be in my screen. And in my screen, I now can go to the verifier application and scan the data matrix code. Once the data matrix code has been scanned, the um, signatures included in the credentials are going to be verified using the public key materials recorded on the decentralized identifier, which remember that it is anchored to the IOTA distributed ledger. In this case, it is a valid credential with all the data that we saw, uh, we have shown before. As the last step in our demonstration, I'm going to show to you how a new a new device identifier can be obtained for a device. And the steps that I will be showing is how a device can be actually onboarded on a supply chain so that there is end-to-end -end traceability for the events generated by that device on supply chains. For doing so, I'm going to go to another application, which is the device identifier application. In this application, I start with setting a name for my device and after setting a name for my device, a new decentralized identity for the device is going to be generated. But our objective is to actually obtain a new verifiable credential for our device that contains all the claims that can be made by that device. So first of all, we need to request a device ID credential where we generate a QR code that just contains all the claims made by the device and that that will be used by the owner of the device to issue a credential for the device. So in this case, these are 
the uh, claims made by the device, like the identifier, the model, the manufacturer, etc. So with this data matrix code that I'm going to capture as well, we can go to the issuer application. So I have now my data matrix code capture, and I can go now to the issuer application that in our case is just the same. Sorry. Is just the same as the holder application. And here we can just capture the data matrix code. We now have the device claims. And with this device claims, we are going now to issue a credential in this case where the subject of the credential is the device itself. So we issue the credential. And now we have a credential for our device. Well, now the last step is capture, so sharing this credential to our device so that the device now will have in its wallet the credential just generated. So we can, we do the, uh, the same procedure. And now we go to the device ID application to the next step and we just capture the data matrix that contains the credential for the device. And the important thing now that you can see is the subject of our credential is actually the DID associated to our device and the issuer of the credential is the device owner, myself. And as I said before, this credential can be later presented by the device against, for instance, the track and trace ledger API so that there is end-to-end -end traceability for the device events generated by this device and traceability against those business events, for instance, EPCIS events that have been generated, that have been uh, associated to those device events. Thank you very much. And this is the end of our presentation today.